Global Suburban Infrastructure Workshop. This is really great to have you all here. Um, I'm looking forward to two days of very active discussion and intellectual exchange. Uh, before moving to practical information and also to comments about the general orientation of the workshop, uh, I would like to have two people to invite us here. Uh, the first is Dean Jean Andre. We're really lucky to have Jean as Dean and the faculty. Uh, Jean works on climate change and on transportation, so there's that infrastructure dimension to what she does. So if you can say yeah. a few words of welcome. Well, I just I do very much want to welcome you to Waterloo and to the campus. I know you come from many different parts of the world, and it's so important that we learn from one another. Mm. I don't know if people have given you the, the two-minute spiel on Waterloo, but you know, as you can imagine, that's one of my main jobs is to tell you who we are. So let me tell you that for two minutes and then maybe end with a, a one-minute minute comment on, on suburbanisms. But um, Waterloo is a, is a fairly young university, but it's an ambitious university. And we're organized in an interesting way. We have six faculties. Four of them are organized around disciplines. So we have mathematics and engineering and science and arts. And the other two faculties are organized in an interdisciplinary way to address important problems. And so environment and applied health are the two interdisciplinary faculties. So of course we are in environment, uh, as you know. We have five units, so we have geography, Planning, Environment, Enterprise, and Development, which is a combination of environment and business and international development. We have knowledge integration. And then we have your hosts for the workshop, the School of Planning, which I believe is the only Canadian school, school in, of planning that offers degrees at the undergraduate, master's, and, and PhD level. So this is who we are. We're a fast-growing faculty, and as I say, we're kind of here to, to, to address important problems. And of course, that's why we're here today, to address an important problem. The concept of suburbanism has always intrigued me. I've lived in five different Canadian contexts. I grew up on a farm, and when up in Bruce County, for those of you who know Ontario, I knew I was living in a rural environment because Everything you did was known by all of your neighbors. <laughs> and when you were bored and looked for something to do, you would take a ball and throw it for the dog because, you know, you were rural and your options were limited. I've also lived in, in uh, Waterloo in two locations. I, I, I currently live right in the core of our small city of Waterloo. But before that, I lived in a place, and I don't even know how many of you would think of it, People have told me I lived in the suburbs, but I was within a half an hour walk of the very core of the city. They called it suburban because it had the curvilinear streets, it had moderate density, but it, the question of suburbanisms involved definition, as you know, as many of other things. I've also lived in Western Canada, and in those cases, both in Edmonton and Calgary, I knew where I was. In one case, I was very much in the core, and in another case, I knew I was in a suburb. So these are, these are, interesting, um, these are interesting things. Is what do we mean by suburbanism, and, and how does that translate into infrastructure challenges? As Pierre has said, my area of work is, is partly transportation, but often how weather and climate affect transportation. But for many years, I taught a transport course in geography. And um, one of the articles, and many of you maybe have, have read it, it's by um, um, Brownstone and, and Kim, and it looks at the USA travel um, data, uh, the passenger travel survey, and it looks at what happens when people change their location. And um, it, it again makes me think very much about this continuum um, in terms of a city core to rural. And it's a fascinating piece which has all kinds of inf infrastructure implications because they show that whether you go from rural to town, or town to suburb, or suburb to second city, or second city to the c to city core, and they sort of had this gradation. 
as you move in, you travel less, fewer vehicle kilometers, less fuel travel, sometimes fewer counted trips. And if you go the other way, you do more. And so this is interesting because this is tracking what, what people do as they move. So, so I, I, I guess I challenge you to think um, about these problems in many ways. But as you know, all of us are on the move. We live in many different places at different points in our life. And uh, in part, we define the problems. And in part, the problems define our behavior. What a fun challenge you have ahead of you. Anyway, thank you for coming to Waterloo. And thank you. Uh, Clarence Woodsma, the director of the School of Planning. Not only will he give a paper, but he'll also introduce you know, the School of Planning and tell you a few words. Okay. Thanks, Pierre. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's hard to follow the dean, so uh, I won't try and attempt to, to reach your grandeur. A uh, little bit about the School of Planning that Pierre is a member of. We're very fortunate to have him as one of our more senior faculty members. We have 18 faculty in the School of Planning here, over 400 students studying across the three degrees. Uh, one of the things that is the hallmark of our school is that our undergraduate program is all co-op. So every student that's in the undergraduate program spends five terms uh, working in practice. And I think that's one of the, I guess, the hallmarks of our educational experience is that we very much have this connection between the practice realm and the academic realm when it comes to planning. And I think looking at the uh, papers today and, and the topics that we're going to be exploring, it very much gets into this uh, interaction between the practice realm profession and what happens academically and our sort of thoughts and perspectives on that. Um, I want to applaud uh, Pierre and Roger in, in terms of the agenda. It's a really fascinating group of papers and presentations around this infrastructure's theme uh, and we're very much uh, pleased to be hosting this event and, and wish you much success over the two days ahead. So welcome to, from the School of Planning. Thank you. Do you want to say introductory words sure about the orientation where we're going yeah okay well thanks a lot and thanks Pierre for organizing this and Marcus also um, and thanks for to, to the School of Planning for hosting this uh, that is uh, for us an ideal location because we're from coming from Toronto but you come from around the world and for any I say us it's uh, the people from York uh, in, that includes the students that most of you have met on the tour yesterday um, we're teaching a, a class here this, this week, which we started in Toronto last week. And so there quite a bit, uh, there's quite a bit of um, people in the room from, from Toronto. So we're happy that we could um, visit our sister school of the environment here because we're from the faculty, some of us, most of us, from the <coughs> faculty of environmental studies at York University. So there's uh, that kind of tie too, which I'd like to point out. Um, most of you have met me in some circumstance in years past. Today you're meeting me again as the principal investigator of this uh, project which the Dean already picked up on. I'm glad when people pick up on the term and she picked up on in the way that we like to talk about it which is global suburbanisms um, and these are ways of life and but we have three sub themes uh, in that seven-year project which is funded by the Social Science and Humanities Research Council and is now at the beginning of its sixth year, so we have two more years to go. And these three themes are governance, land, and infrastructure. And this is the last of three foundational workshops that we have um, in the project. We had two before, one in 2011, exactly four years ago, during another Women's World Cup. That one was in Germany. And we were in Germany, we were in Leipzig, Germany, and worked there uh, on the theme of governance. And out of that, just a couple of months ago, uh, this book was published, which is called <coughs> Suburban Governance, A Global View. And then 2012, in the fall, uh, under the directorship of Richard Harris, Robin Bloch, and Ute Lehrer, who is here with us, uh, we did a similar workshop in Montpellier in France on the topic of land. And they are in the process of finalizing the book, um, which is going to look pretty much like this book, because it is in a series called Global Suburbanism from the University of Toronto Press. This is the first in that series, um, and there uh, are more to come. On One is one in the works on Europe, one in North America, and, and, and. So we hope that this workshop will lead to a similar result. It, we hope actually it will be just like this, uh, as we have begun to talk to the University of Toronto Press 
um, uh, about the possibility of doing a book like this. I'm mentioning that not only because I want to show you the book, <laughs> but also because it is, for me, it is important that we all understand. Now the papers are written, you're all ready to go, and I've read these fantastic abstracts, and I was really elated when I read the abstracts all together last week and from the beginning to end, and I thought, this is just amazing. There's so much energy already in those abstracts, and I think it was a good idea to ask you to write more than 250 words, because most of you actually got into the paper already, so you already have drafts, which is great. So there's something happening. So I'm not, I'm not wanting you to change your presentation or your, your papers or to think about that or double, you know, question yourself in, in, over the next two days. But I would, what, what, I like, what I would like us to do collectively is as we discuss these papers, as we get into a discussion which I hope will grow in intensity and sophistication over the next two days, I would ask us all to think conceptually. So rather than getting mired on, you know, miles traveled on, traveled on transit and this may be the case or that may be the case or this particular empirical detail over that particular uh, empirical detail in the case studies, I would like us all to lift the de debate up as we refer to each other's papers about what we can learn conceptually and methodologically from that. Because that is the idea of making this a foundations workshop. That we as a group, and we are qu quite, we're not quite global, but we're fairly international. We come from very different kinds of places, and the case studies are from very different kinds of places. That we rise above <coughs> though, the individuality, the idiosyncratic uh, sync nature of those, those case studies, and make a contribution to the overall debate at the level of urban theory, uh, I would say, suburban theory. So uh, that is my request, that we always keep that in mind as we refer to each other's work. And uh, so, as I said, don't change anything about your papers, uh, but let's try to, to move that up collectively to that level, which I think is already in the abstracts that I've seen. So um, from my end, uh, and the dean already you know, gave some of those I think it's very important what she said about the individuality of each of those places where she lived, which could be or could not be suburban or rural or urban, or what, we, what have you. The only thing I want to say at the beginning, because we, you've seen, and most of you, all of you have read the paper um, that Pierre and I produced, what I think is important uh, to understand is that this idea of the suburb or of suburbanization is in, in fact on a sliding scale. We on a movable scale. There is no register there that says this is a suburb and this is not a suburb. What we're looking at is a process of suburbanization. So along the wide variety of suburbanisms, we're looking at suburbanization as a worldwide process which is ongoing. It's not something that is in the past and we now, because we have a few condo buildings downtown, we're beyond that. Suburbanization as a process continues on. And it is, in, a the in theoretical terms, part of what Lefebvre calls extended or extensive urbanization. And that's important because in that process of extended or extensive or, you know, sprawling type of urbanization that's sprawling now, as people tell us, uh, reaches around the planet or even beyond that, in that process, there is a new renegotiation renego going on between centers and peripheries. And Alan Wax has written a great paper about that uh, from a Lefebvrean point of view, which I recommend to everybody to, to have a look at. And the fact that this process of exten extension of the city, both in terms of its urban regional uh, extension, but also in terms of its global reach, that, th that, that re creates not just sprawl extension itself, but it creates new centralities, has to do more than anything with the idea of infrastructure. Because as we could see yesterday already, by even, you know, in a small town like Waterloo, you go to the periphery, you find an airport. And when RIM sees the light of day again and, you know, the sales of something they produce will go up, 
I'm sure two things will, go, will happen. Number one, there will be new private jets coming to that airport and create new centralities at the periphery of the city. And many of those people that come with those jets will actually stay and buy those single family homes on the periphery, which I think I wouldn't give up on yet. Not that I want to live there, but <laughs> I think um, you know, the, the capacity of a place, even a small town or a medium-sized town like Waterloo, not looking at the Londons and Torontos and New Yorks and Shanghais, but looking at a place like this, which has its own dynamics uh, of building peripheries and centralities. That should be the topic of what we're talking about today. It's a contradictory process. It's one that we should not easily judge yet because we are in the middle of a lot of dynamics that are driven by infrastructure and infrastructural developments. It's just one thing I want to throw in that I'm getting incre incre increasingly interested in, which is the issue of autonomous cars. Uh, yesterday I was thinking on these country roads. What are these country roads going to look like? The horse and buggies next to these autonomous cars. That's a lot of something I want you to all think about. So there's this book, there's two more, just to show you the longevity of the work that we've done together. A, a large number of people in this room have already been in a previous project on specifically on infrastructure, which came out in this book, which you can download if you are interested. I can put that online. Uh, so this actually preceded the current uh, uh, work on infrastructure, uh, on, on, on global suburbanisms. And a large number of people in this room, of course, are also already in this book, which is all the 17 projects, including the empirical projects, not just the foundational conceptual projects that we have been doing in this, um, in this uh, project. The last words, because I mentioned Pierre and, and uh, Marcus, the last word I want to say is a word of thanks to the two Sarahs. One Sarah here, one Sarah there who have been the organizational backbone behind the scenes of getting you all here and getting your claims uh, processed at the end of all this. Uh, thanks again to everybody involved in organizing this and I wish you all a good workshop.